Good morning, folks. We've got cool visuals, irony, and academic journalism. And our top story progresses the story of humans in North America through the last few catastrophe cycles. But we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was quiet, but with plenty to see. Coronal hold departing, its solar wind should be arriving within a day. Bright active regions as well, with another coronal hole incoming from the left. Let's peek in on the sunspots beneath the active regions where the northern group is beginning to decay, while the southern spots are still stable, but much smaller. We'll be watching those, but with the solar wind anemically dropping to super slow levels, it's the coronal hole stream that is next up to produce significant changes in the solar wind and geomagnetic conditions. Cool visualizations up next, starting with the ESA as Cryosat is pinging glacial heights. Now it is worth noting, it was Cryosat data that we recently went over as being in need of major correction, most recently in the April 22nd morning show. They have these visualizations for Alaskan glaciers and the Himalaya. But we're heading over next to NASA's turn at a visualization. You may have seen this one before. Their inside and 360 look at Hurricane Maria. It is now part of a larger article on hurricane monitoring and study, from the storms themselves to the weather patterns preceding them, to the flooding that ensues and even power usage across an affected area. By the way, in their 360 degree visualizations, you can click and drag and look around all while their background sequences continue running. Up next is a seriously ironic article. They claim that the self-correcting nature of science gets missed when the news reports science failures and that it negatively affects people's perceptions. I would counter that that might not be the case if it weren't for their overconfidence, their statements of certainty, shill baiting for grants, positions, propaganda, and politics. Folks, climate science, pre-seismic electromagnetism, dark matter, and the true history of our species and our world, when there are legitimate lacks of honor in science, maybe they're getting what they deserve upon failure. So folks, we're leading into our top story with last year's bombshell, which took the Clovis people from a great hypothesis to, that really happened. Today we refine the timeline in the finding of work, bones, and culture from the period right after the Mono Lake magnetic excursion. Immediately following that period, the people surged away from Asia and spread through the Americas, and this is unquestionably a different group of people than the ones who came after the last disaster. This new data confirmation allows us to solidify the American history a bit more. They surged into the region after the Mono Lake magnetic event, only to be pushed out by increasing glaciation during the last glacial maximum, which coincided with the Lake Mungo magnetic event. Sparse populations did return and tried to spread quickly around 13,000 years ago, only for most of them to be obliterated in the Gothenburg magnetic event and the Younger Dryas disaster about 12,000 years ago. Always good to remember, the lucky spots on Earth change from cycle to cycle. We greatly appreciate your support. Click Suspicious Observers here on YouTube to go to our channel homepage. Maybe find a playlist you haven't seen yet. Maybe on the disaster cycle we discussed today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.